All right, then we will move on to item number four, announcements and presentations. First one is item A, respond before the knock. As of August 11, 2020, the U.S. Census Bureau workers began in-person outreach to homes that have not completed the 2020 census form. Make sure, make sure you and your family are counted by responding to the census. The census only comes around every 10 years and it ensures that San Bruno will receive our share of federal funds for parks, schools, and other programs. You can visit my20census.gov to submit your account. With that, um, we're gonna move on to item B, and that is the August wildfire update. And that's the C C Z U lightning uh, complex fire that we had. I'm gonna turn it over to Javon, and then once he's done, he can uh, call in uh, our chiefs. Uh, but also from there, we're going to go into uh, update on the Crestmore Canyon wildfire mitigation project, since it's with the fire department. And then we can ask questions of either of those items uh, after that. So with that, uh, city manager. Thank you, uh, Mayor, members of the council, and members of the public, Javon Brogan, city manager. Uh, just want to introduce uh, the speakers that we're going to have on our two uh, fire-related announcements. Uh, as the mayor said, we have two. We're going to have an update on the August wildfire, uh, in particular, the CZU lightning complex fire occurring in southern San Mateo County, as well as northern uh, Santa Cruz County. That update will be provided by uh, our fire chief, Ari DeLay. Uh, we will then uh, roll immediately into an update on our own Crestmore Canyon wildfire mitigation uh, project, and that will be done by our fire marshal, Gabe Slice. Uh, Ari will also provide an update uh, of, um, of how our fire crews are doing. We do have uh, a engine uh, that is supporting the CZU complex fire uh, as a part of a countywide uh, strike team. Uh, but before Ari begins, I just want to know that there are a number of heroes that uh, are providing uh, remarkable service uh, to uh, not just uh, our county in Santa Cruz County, but all across California. Um, but in particular, uh, I, I just want to take a moment uh, to let the public know and to thank Ari Delay, our fire chief, uh, for his efforts uh, the night of August 15th, uh, going into the morning of Sunday, August 16th, as he personally hiked three miles uh, into La Honda, uh, with the crew to um, control a wildfire that was happening in that area, which is, uh, as we all know, Southern San Mateo County. Uh, and, and the efforts of that team that he led, uh, protecting that community is also protecting this community. And so thank you. Uh, it's not often that you have a, a chief <laughs> that is a working chief uh, that, that goes out and, and will hike in uh, miles to um, uh, put out a fire uh, or, or surround it and help to contain it without water literally just doing it with uh, the, the, the hand tools that they were able to carry in with them. So remarkable effort um, uh, for that community. And thank you. Thank you, Ari. So with that, Ari, uh, will you provide uh, the update? Sure. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Great. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the council, Ari Delay, your fire chief. Um, this evening, I'm here to give you a situation report on the status of fires throughout California. And what I would like to do is start off at a statewide level, bring it down to a county level, and then work towards bringing it down to a local level for things that directly affect us here in San Bruno. Um, and before I get started, I'd like to just uh, give you a little bit of uh, terminology. So when we say uh, these complexes, I just want to give you some context so you have a, a, an understanding of what a complex means and how, it, how that name kind of comes about. So a complex is two or more distinct incidents in the same general area that by management action are managed under a single incident commander or unified command in order to find efficiency and simplify the incident management process. So when we talk about these lightning series that go through a large geographic area, uh, if we try to manage it with individual incident commanders, it would be very difficult. So we try to coordinate our efforts and manage them under one incident management system. With that said, um, starting off at a statewide level, uh, statewide, there's four major incidents going throughout California. There are many more, but these are the major incidents I'd like to highlight. 
Um, and I'd like to also uh, note that the, the resources throughout California are stretched extremely thin lately with all the major incidents going on. And I'm gonna go over just quick, briefly these four major incidents. The first one would be the LNU Lightning Complex in Napa County. It's about 352,000 acres and it's currently at 29% containment. Uh, they had uh, 937 structures destroyed, and they have, currently have evacuations in place, and they have what they call an IMT, or an incident management team, assigned to that incident. The next one is the CZU August Lightning. This is one particularly, obviously, uh, important to us here in the city of San Bruno. Um, that fire is currently at 78,000 acres, and it's 17% contained. Um, uh, significant progress made on that fire in the last day or two. Uh, the weather has really been helpful and they've been able to get quite a few more resources out to be able to help on the fire line. They have the Butte Complex. It's another lightning complex, just like I described before. It's at about 53,000 acres and it's at 15% containment. So those are the four major incidents going on throughout California. And then I will just give you a brief update on the CCU complex itself. Again, I said it's 78,000 acres, including both San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties. And again, it's at 17% containment. Um, they, the fire only grew about uh, 870 acres yesterday due to good weather and excellent firefighting conditions. They've dropped more than 200,000 gallons of fire retardant on the fire. And the fire is split obviously between San Mateo and Santa Cruz County. And about 12,000 acres of that is in San Mateo County. And the remainder is in Santa Cruz County. In San Mateo County, we lost 11 structures in the south end of San Mateo County, um, and they're continuing to survey and do what they call damage assessment to determine how many structures have been lost uh, throughout San Mateo and Santa Cruz County. Um, the Sheriff's Office is very engaged and they have mutual aid support, in, in including multiple law enforcement agencies across both counties and other counties throughout the Bay Area. And um, I would just say uh, one important note, uh, someone mentioned earlier, a member of the public about large animals. Uh, they had a total of 1,498 large animals that were evacuated from residents throughout the south uh, of San Mateo County. And they have an evacuation center that we normally think about for people, but this evacuation center is actually for animals and that's staged at the Cow Palace um, there in Daly City. So um, that is the CZU Lightning Complex. Uh, we do have, uh, as the city manager noted, uh, Engine 51 is participating in the California Mutual Aid System and is there at the CZU Lightning Complex and is there protecting currently the town of Boulder Creek. Um, I have a good friend that works there and he sent me a picture of our crews actually working in downtown Boulder Creek and thanked us for the response. Um, bringing it really close home locally here to San Bruno, we just recently, I'm sure everyone's aware, we had a few uh, fires along the 280 corridor. The most significant, I would say, would be the Larkspur incident. This was a fast moving wildfire that was on Highway 280, uh, just south of San Bruno Avenue. Um, this fire was in some heavy fuels and it was upslope and it went to a third alarm. And I would just bring to the council's attention and the members of the public that, you know, right now it's something that's, it's, it's not very common for the city of San Bruno, but smoke is in the air. And that means that fire danger is high. And I would just bring it to everyone's attention that we really need to remain vigilant as a community and uh, make sure that if we see something to say something, if you're not sure if something's right or not, or there's smoke that looks out of place, to make sure and use the 911 system and call and get a response uh, started that way, we would much rather go and respond to a false alarm than uh, take extra minutes of time where we could have been in an emergency that someone's just not sure of. So um, I would just take warning uh, in regards to that. Okay. All right, moving along, uh, Crestmore uh, Canyon wildfire mitigation. Um, Crestmore Canyon is something that's been going on for quite some time in regards to the PG&E pipeline explosion and some of the dollars that came back from PG&E. Um, and we wanted to tell, help tell the story of Crestmore Canyon and some of the work that's being done in Crestmore Canyon. And what we've done is created what we call a story map. And that story map is gonna highlight some of the work that's being done in the canyon uh, to our council and our citizens, and also be able to show some of the progress that we've made. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and queue up this story map. And after that, I'd like to introduce our fire marshal, and he's going to go do another brief overview of some of the progress uh, for the Crestmore Canyon work as well. So, Melissa, if I can go ahead and share my screen. Okay. 
All right. Can everybody hear me? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and play the story map. And, and Chief, you are having an echo. Yep, I'm sorry, guys. I'm Fire Chief Ari DeLay, and welcome to the Crestmore Canyon Story Map. We wanted to offer our residents an opportunity to have an inside look at Crestmore Canyon and the ongoing wildfire mitigation efforts. Crestmore Canyon is a large open space area totaling 76 acres and is owned by the city of San Bruno. The canyon is wooded, containing some native species of Monterey pine and California live oak, as well as non-native eucalyptus trees. It is surrounded by the Crestmore and Rollingwood residential subdivisions. This unique open space area provides a rare opportunity to connect people to nature. During the 2010 PG&E gas pipeline explosion in the Crestmore neighborhood, the fire spread into Crestmore Canyon. Fortunately, the devastation was mitigated by the quick thinking and heroic efforts of the first responders. This prevented the fire from spreading further into adjacent neighborhoods. Had a significant portion of the canyon caught fire, large swaths of the city could have been destroyed, with many more people injured or killed. Fire danger in the canyon remains a critical concern of the city and residents of the affected Crestmore neighborhood. This story map of Crestmore Canyon will provide a detailed history, multimedia, and ongoing updates of wildfire mitigation work. We hope you find value in this story map and encourage you to explore its contents. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? So that's our story, story map. And I would like to uh, show you now a, a quick video that was developed by uh, our PIO team, including assistance to the city manager, Jennifer Dianos, uh, Officer John Hampton from San Bruno Police Department, and members of the fire department, including our fire marshal. Um, and this video is really meant to highlight the work of the three C's uh, that they do every day and their specific work here in the city of San Bruno. My name is Cesar Ramirez. My name is Jahaira Zaragoza. Daniel. Uh, my last name is Elvarez. John Dorbit. I work for the California Conservation Corps. I'm a supervisor for the California Conservation Corps. I've been doing it now 14 years. I've been with the CCC for uh, a month and a half. Two years with the C's. About, about 10 years now, a little over 10 years. So it's been a while. Today is, in fact, my last day. got asked to come out to the beautiful city of San Bruno to do some fuel reduction, and it was an exciting eight days. We've had these devastating wildfires throughout California. It's, it's time to you know, at least try and get them under control. The mountains are pretty steep, or the hills. The work here is definitely harder than I expected. The hill out there was was awesome, actually. It's, it's been a little while since we've had a, a real challenge at work. I have poison oak everywhere. <laughs> it's exhausting, you know, but it, you just have to mentally get through it. And I think that my, the best advice that I can give someone is your mind is the one who says no. You know, it's not your body. So you need to push through it. I enjoy finding that person that really wants to be taken out of their element, taken out of their hometown, and, and really try something different, really disappear, really push themselves, uh, really try to find themselves. It, it means a lot to me to be able to mentor these um, these core members and just kind of steer them in the right direction and help them along with their, their starting their careers. Coming out here, finishing my uh, time with the seas, um, having the hill, having the hike, running a crew, running a chainsaw, um, dropping all these trees, it was just, I couldn't ask for a better ending. I hope that we've done a, a, a good enough job or a great job that you'll be asking us back and, and continue to do this kind of work here. That's definitely needed if you look around.
Schmidt, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So what I'd like to just bring your attention to is uh, a, a quick map of our progress in the canyon. Um, this is going to be a, a live and interactive a map that's kind of organic and that kind of moves along with our progress throughout the canyon. And it highlights this first what we call a spike. There's an eight-day tour uh, that the three seas do in the canyon um, here in Crestmore Canyon. So if you see, we uh, worked uh, very extensively uh, around the Quail Point um, condo complex, um, and we've done extensive work there, and it's been really a fantastic effort. And before I leave uh, and introduce our fire marshal Gates slice, I just want to say, thank really uh, our PIO team, uh, assistant to the city manager, Jennifer Dianos, and John Hampton for their amazing work uh, creating this story map and uh, the work that they have done there. With that said, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Chief Slice, our fire marshal. Can you hear me all right? You're good. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the council. My name is Gage Slice, and I am your fire marshal for the city of San Bruno. I'm here this evening to give you a brief update on the wildfire mitigation project in Crestport Canyon. The first segment of the work has been completed. As Chief DeLay had mentioned, it's approximately four acres were improved. Uh, the next scheduled segments are September 9th to the 16th and September 23rd to the 30th. The work scheduled for August 26 was delayed because of the devastating wildfires occurring in our state right now. A total of five or six segments are still expected to be completed by the end of 2020. The city has received approval from Judge Elsa on the funds required to finish this phase of the project. Our partners, the California Conservation Corps, will continue to work with the fire department to provide fuel reduction in the canyon. Crews will continue to work with the chipper and put material on the ground to help prevent erosion and to help with weed management. The work occurring in the canyon still focuses on the creation of defensible space between the residential neighborhoods and the open space. This project is even more important now. What we have seen these past few weeks can happen so close to home. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, that concludes our uh, two announcements on those items, um, and we're uh, open for any questions or uh, next items on the agenda. Uh, questions, Councilmember Medina. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, I've been through the canyon a little bit. Uh, it looks much better. Um, if we could possibly have those schedules uh, maintained on the website. I occasionally uh, see a social media post um, asking what's going on, what's next. And um, the primary contact would uh, would be our fire marshal if somebody had a question about uh, Crestmore Canyon mitigation. Yes, and so uh, that story map uh, will be up on our website. Uh, as we mentioned, it will be interactive, so you can follow the, the progress uh, and, and a schedule for when all of the work will be completed uh, will also be up. And again, it's intended to be a living and breathing document. And so as additional components of our larger $3 million Crestmore Canyon wildfire mitigation projects occurs, we will uh, further develop the story map. Excellent. Thank you very much. Councilmember Davis. Thank you, Mayor Medina. Um, so with a sort of moving target and, and we're coming upon fire season, you'd think we were past that by now, but I, I can imagine that these dates are not gonna be really book solid because they're gonna change different things. So how do we get the residents in the neighborhood to really point to the website, right? Not everybody realizes they can go or how to find on the website. So is there like one piece of communication that you can send out that says fall, that's weird. Anybody hear that noise? Yes. Um, okay. Is there something that they could either call City Hall to ask for an update if they don't, if they're not connected to a computer, because not connected to a computer, and or the letter would just basically. Uh, hold on, um, Council Members, if we could be muted and allow Member Mason, and then Council Member Davis will go back to you. Um, uh, regarding the website information. Thank you. So just getting the letter out one letter, so we're not constantly emailing or sending out letters multiple times, 
one letter, here's the information, whether it's a card, not a letter, just something simple to make sure people know. And I think that's the important piece. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Council Member Davis, uh, we are doing both door hangers uh, and a trifold miller uh, to the uh, residents along the uh, rim of the canyon, uh, so so they will be notified. Uh, and in regard to letting the larger community know uh, know about um, the status, we will be announcing the story map through our social media uh, platforms. Uh, and and the, the main counter or, or the main number to City Hall if someone has a general question. Uh, staff will, will be able to refer uh, them and, and provide the correct information. And if they have a detailed question, again, they'll be referred to the, the fire marshal. Thank you so much. Councilmember Mason. Hey, I just wanted to ask, um, and I have a comment after, but our, uh, for areas of San Bruno that are hazards, so if there's you know, overgrown grass, dry areas, what are the measures that are being taken um, to try to prevent any future fires? Because it's, it, it's been hot and this is our hot season, our Indian summers. Sure, uh, council member uh, Mason, I, I think what you're, um, at, at the root of your question is, we, uh, through uh, monetizing the remaining community service hours uh, that pg and &E, uh, had, we were able to acquire $3 million to do a wildfire mitigation project within the canyon. However, that is not our only fire danger. It's our most significant, but it's not our only fire danger. And there are other um, areas across the city, uh, some of which are city property, uh, some of which are owned by other agencies. And so uh, what is the process by which uh, we are uh, planning to address those? I think it's sort of the, the core part of, of your question. Uh, and so I think we can take that in pieces uh, with regard to private property. Uh, the fire marshal has a, a regular normal business practice of uh, approaching private property owners that uh, need to trim uh, their vegetation and reduce their fire risk. Uh, and that, that is part of the normal uh, occurrence of city business. And if someone has a complaint, uh, that they uh, file, be that through SB response, phone call, or email, those are forwarded to the fire marshal uh, and addressed accordingly. Uh, with regard to city property or property that may be owned by other agencies, uh, for the city property, uh, one of the things that we know we need, frankly, are more financial resources uh, to be able to address those. And uh, Crestmore Canyon uh, is in the state that it's in now because we have not had uh, the, the resources um, from our budget to go out and do a robust fire mitigation. Now we have that ability uh, through the $3 million uh, in the, uh, that the judge has awarded to us. Uh, the approximately $600,000 contract with the three C's that the city council authorized and the judge approved will provide that fire mitigation for five years in the canyon. Uh, and what we need to do uh, for our, our other city properties is uh, grow, our, grow our resources and our budget um, so that we have the ability uh, to maintain those. And uh, through work with the fire marshal and our um, community services department, our, uh, our landscape maintenance division within there, uh, they will be undertaking an effort to assess all of the areas uh, that are city owned that need additional work uh, and put together a plan for us to address those. Uh, now that may come with a resource uh, request that, you know, depending on our budget, we may or may not be able to, to fund. Uh, but certainly uh, through subsequent budget cycles, we will make that information known and, and try to fund those. Great, thank you. Um, and I just wanted to thank our fire department. I know that we had the San Mateo County fires over the weekend. And then on top of that, we had the local San Bruno fire that I think was unexpected and unanticipated. So just thank you to everybody who was working all weekend. It really means a lot to our community. Thank you. Uh, and if I can, through the mayor, uh, the fire marshal just reminded me that we did do a no harm uh, fire risk assessment uh, that will be coming back to the city council. And the city council um, awarded that contract approximately six months ago. And so that work has been done, which identifies our most um, uh, risky areas, and so we will prioritize the work based on that study. Councilmember Medina. 
Okay. I just saw your hand. Thanks. I was thinking before. Thank you very much. I'm done. No worries. Uh, anything, Vice Mayor? Thank you. Uh, had to scroll over here to unmute myself. Um, I just wanted to say that this um, this GIS uh, story map is is pretty pretty cool. This is really nice work, uh, and I, it, not only does it really highlight some important work that's happening um, that uh, the public may not you know be aware of, and here you know here's a way to to really uh, you know, tell something compelling, something good that's happening in the city. So I, I and just the technology that, that's being used here is just really, um, really impressive. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the quality of how this turned out. I, I'm uh, really impressed with the, the way this story comes across. So I just wanted to congratulate staff on doing a, a really good job with this. And um, uh, you, know, you guys keep raising the bar, so uh, be careful. Thank you. And then uh, just to, to echo what the vice mayor said uh, uh, to both the, the chiefs, the PIO team um, for what you've done and, and the work, uh, I think it is, is something that is critical, it is important, it is something that we're dealing with in the canyon. You're taking the first steps for defensible space. Triple C's, as I've learned, that young lady, um, I guess was two years and that was her last day, not because, you know, that's just the part of the program. Uh, but as one of the chiefs told me that she was even emotional uh, leaving the program. And so these folks, let me tell you, it's work they do that I cannot, uh, and I would probably uh, look pretty foolish trying, but they're really, really, uh, from what the chief has said, uh, really do a great job and provide a great service uh, for our community. And I do want to thank, this is something that goes back some years that uh, folks have wanted some, some type of uh, mitigation, and so I appreciate that. And again, thank you on the videos and the presentation, um, and as has already been echoed by uh, the team here is just thank you for uh, all that the fire departments are doing uh, in all counties because obviously everybody's been stretched and been asked to do a lot and work 72 hour shifts at times. So thank you. With that, we'll go ahead and move on to um, item D receive update on COVID 19 response efforts. Jennifer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That is a hard act to follow, um, but I'll do my best. So good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Jennifer Dianos. I'm the assistant to the City Manager. And I'm here this evening uh, representing our Emergency Operations Center public information team and will provide a general update on COVID-19. Uh, this evening's update includes an overview of COVID-19 st statistics in San Bruno, as well as countywide information on San Mateo County's current status, including a recent change to the allowances of city park athletic fields for youth sports organizations, as well as a few local resources available to our community. City Manager Brogan and I will be available for questions after the presentation. And we'll start with our statistics. Consistently pulled our statistics from the County San Mateo Health Department in each update to the City Council. In San Bruno, the county reports that there are 338 positive cases um, of COVID-19 as of this past Friday, August 20th. The county does not provide specific demographics or further drill down on this number as it's gathered simply by the City of Residents for those that test positive for COVID-19. Countywide, there are a total of 7,788 positive cases and a total of 130 deaths. As you can see, these statistics are provided with a full further drill down um, of total cases, new cases by day, as well as information on age and ethnicity. You likely heard on the news that there were significant problems with the state of California reporting system, of which resulted in underreporting of COVID-19 testing results to our county and local health departments statewide. The county continues to work with the state's public health department to identify and resolve these issues. Um, the county offers this information on their website. We'll continue to use the site for consistent methodology and the data that updates that are provided to you in these regular presentations. 
The state continues to use this information to evaluate counties and their containment of COVID-19 and will be used for the criteria to evaluate whether our county remains on the state's monitoring list. Um, as a reminder, all of these statistics are as of the date noted on the screen, August 24th, and are available on the county health website at smchealth.org. Next slide, please. It's been about a month since I last reported out to you and a lot has changed since then, which most of us, or I can pretty much assume all of us are aware of these changes that have affected us. So what is our current status? As of Sunday, August 2nd, 2020 at 12.01 a.m., the County of San Mateo was added to the state's monitoring list due to our county not falling within the pre-established criteria related to um, the COVID-19 guidelines that the state established. While on the monitoring list, the following businesses are required to close their doors for indoor operations. Um, that includes gyms and fitness centers, places of worship and cultural ceremonies, for example, weddings and funerals, um, offices for non-critical infrastructure sectors, personal care services, for example, nail salons and body waxing shops, hair salons and barber shops, as well as indoor shopping malls. As you can see from the map on the screen, which is directly from the state's website, our county remains on the monitoring list along with many other counties within the state, which are all identified in the yellowish orangish color that you see. I also inserted a circle on the map to show you precisely where our county falls. Um, this snapshot of closures was taken earlier today, August 25th, excuse me, 25th. While the status can change with very short notice, I'm unaware of any changes to the status you see here. Next slide, please. These closures are in addition to the previous calls for closure statewide for indoor operations, and those continue to stay the same. That is indoor uh, dine-in restaurants, wineries and tasting rooms, movie theaters, family entertainment centers, zoos and museums, card rooms, and lastly, bars of which must close all operations. Bars are not allowed to operate outdoors. Our Sanford Emergency Operations Center continues to operate in, and is in process of evaluating an executive order to consider outdoor allowances for the businesses that are required to close by the state. And this is really similar to the outdoor dining program that was put in place for restaurants that are interested in their patrons being able to dine outdoors. I have a little bit more information uh, later on in this presentation about business support. Since our last update, Dr. Scott Morrow, our county's health officer, issued a statement related to the business closures. The statement is dated August 6th, so it's slightly dated, um, but it is available in its entirety on the county health website at smchealth.org. Dr. Morrow continues to emphasize the need to not gather, use facial coverings, and to social distance. Next slide, please. Given our many restrictions since the initial um, shelter in place order earlier this year, back in March, I know many families have been eager to hear about city park usage, and so I'm happy to be able to share the information on this slide with you. In accordance with the state of California's return to play for youth sports, youth sports organizations are now allowed to use city owned fields for practice, conditioning and clinics. The fields um, had been closed or very restricted for quite some time. And this is a new allowance in our community. Reservations for teams and groups are required and each youth organization must adhere to the return to play procedures, guidelines and requirements, including those that require masks and social distancing social distancing. Uh, while practice conditioning and clinics are allowed, games and scrimmages are not allowed. So no games, no scrimmages. Youth organizations can reserve a field for use by contacting our community services department. And that number is on the screen, but it's 650-616-7180. And this should not be confused with any of the youth programming that the city would ordinarily offer. At this time, the city does not have this programming available or in place to the public. This is for um, youth organizations that are already established. Well, oh, sorry, not yet. While um, field use restrictions have eased slightly, it's important to keep in mind that given the current wildfires that um, Chief Delay reported on earlier this evening, our air quality has been poor recently. 
When this information was posted to social media late last week, staff recommended that all outdoor users consider the conditions prior to conducting any outdoor activities for the safety of our residents in the community. The Bay Area um, Air Quality District extended the current spare the air alert, which is now in effect through August 28th. As a reminder, the city playground structures remain closed. Um, however, the city has opened the dog park on Commodore Avenue, most public restrooms, as well as most tennis and basketball courts, although these courts remain restricted to same household play only. No changes. Um, each update, we focus on sharing information on resources, and uh, we believe that the ones that are highlighted today are of high interest to the community. As a reminder, there are other resources. So the ones that I list here this evening are available for those in need, and I've attempted to put them in order by flow, uh, but no other particular order than that. I mean, I'll start with uh, COVID-19 testing. So many residents have expressed interest in free testing. San Bruno currently has two testing sites scheduled through the county. The testing will be conducted at 975 Steve Lane as it has um, been conducted recently and the next site date is this Wednesday, August 26th and next Wednesday, September 2nd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Registration is required and it fills up relatively quickly. So if you or a family member are interested in getting tested, please visit projectbaseline.com forward slash COVID-19 um, to sign up for this site or one of the alternative sites in our county. Um, and there are several sites that are located in other neighboring agencies, and that's Daly City, East Palo Alto, Half Moon Bay, North Fair Oaks, and San Mateo. I should mention that the site location and dates vary by week, so it's important to pre-register. You can monitor particular testing sites as they're made available by visiting the county website at smcgov.org. Many healthcare providers also offer COVID-19 testing. This is sometimes offered at a low rate and may increase the speed in re receiving your test results. Um, if you're interested in testing, it is recommended that you check with your primary care physician first to see what resources may be available to you. Next slide, please. On the screen is a post that our PIO team put together um, to the community, which is a simple reminder that none of us are immune to COVID-19. Um, and it's just important to remember, wear a mask, physically distance, wash your hands, and stay home if you're feeling sick. To help communities in need, the county has put together a mobile mask van for those that do not already have a mask to wear. The van is a fun eye-catching vehicle that will travel to neighborhoods in need and to distribute and disseminate free masks to those in need. The county will announce the city of where the mobile mask van will visit and the visits are really set up in a pop-up style in order to prevent large crowds from gathering um, and to protect the county workers and the community as well. So at this time, the van is tentatively scheduled to be in our area later this week. So keep your eye out if you see it in the street. Um, if you visit the van, please be sure to use caution and social distance from others to be extra safe before receiving your mask. Next is the county's child care relief fund. Um, I mentioned this to you in my last briefing and the application period is now open. Our community has several licensed child care centers and uh, family child care homes that may be eligible to apply for this child care relief fund. The fund was established by the San Mateo County Cares Act Relief Funds and approximately $2 million have been allocated to assist child care centers and homes that are impacted by COVID-19. The grants are designed to cover one month of operating expenses and really prioritize the child care centers and homes that serve the most vulnerable populations. The application period opened yesterday and will remain open through 5 p.m. Excuse me, 5 p.m. on Friday, September 4th. The grants will range from 10,000 for child care homes, 55,000 for child care centers. So more information about this program is on the screen, but for the benefit of those that can't see the screen, the phone number is 650-283-5112 or by emailing heather at communityequitycollaborative.org. Um, you can also link to the program through the county website at smcgov.org. 
Um, and our PIO team has really leveraged our community relationship uh, to expand our ability to get information to targeted audiences. And we partnered with the San Bruno Community Foundation on several occasions to distribute information to businesses in our community and to keep an open line for those businesses that may have questions during these uncertain times, um, especially when there are requirements to close indoor operations with short notice. So we continue this effort to provide the support to the chamber um, and they have put out a local survey to our businesses offering assistance. They're continuing to offer their small business assistance and recovery program and to really find out what our local businesses really need in order to reopen when allowed. Um, we've used this information to help develop guidelines for outdoor activities. As I mentioned earlier, uh, that's information uh, to ensure that we as a city are able to work with businesses to develop the tools that they need in order to sustain their businesses um, in town. And as of now, we've developed the outdoor dining program, which requires a no fee encroachment permit for limited use on public property, um, as well as a use of private property. Our EOC team is also in process of developing a program subset that will provide guidance for other business types that may be eligible for similar outdoor uses on a temporary basis and specifically while our county remains on the monitoring list um, and their businesses are not allowed to operate indoors. I will not go over the full list of business categories as we just did, but if you're interested in revisiting that, you can scroll up in the presentation. And with that, a special shout out to all of our local businesses that have remained open or have modified their operations during this pandemic. We encourage our community to shop local and support support all of our local businesses to express our appreciation for their efforts. Our PIO team put together the line, put your money where your home is. It's just a fun way to remind our community to support one another and shop local. Oh no, I'm sorry, back. there you go. Um, and so speaking of local, many of us, myself included, have our children going back to school or have already gone back to school in a whole new way. And that's the new way of distance learning. This has impacted many families and having to adjust to the new needs and new definition of preparing quote unquote back to school. Um, when COVID-19 first impacted school classrooms, our very own CityNet services quickly put together a program to offer families in need the internet services required to support distance learning. Um, that program is still current and is available. We have um, uh, about 20 participants in the program and have capacity for many more. So if you or a family member that you may know is in need of internet services within our city limits, please contact city net service offices to find out more information about the program. You can do so by calling uh, their office directly, 650-616. 3100, or you can email support at sanbrunocable.com. When the city activated the Emergency Operations Center, we quickly utilized the assistance um, from the executive director of the San Bruno Community Foundation, and she created the image that you see on the screen from a hashtag phrase that our PIO team developed, and specifically our very own Officer Hampton, I would say coined it, um, and that's FB Cares. And we consistently use this hashtag and you'll likely see it in the posts that we make on social media and the images that are used in these presentations to you, um, like several of the slides this evening. Um, for those that don't know, hashtag is a word or phrase that is used on social media to highlight a specific topic or theme. SB Cares is a way to show support to our community and as part of this initiative, our EOC team have identified volunteer opportunities that are available for interested volunteers and connecting them to volunteer opportunities directly. Um, this is a way for our community to give back to those in need and on our website, sambruno.ca.gov forward slash coronavirus, we have a button titled how you can help which offers a variety of ways to volunteer. Next slide, please. Um, and Given COVID-19 and our limited ability for social interaction, there are op opportunities to volunteer remotely. And tonight I have one for you. Um, that's from the health plan of San Mateo, also known as HPSM. HPSM has launched a Dear Neighbor postcard campaign to help reduce social isolation and loneliness. 
um, and specifically to the targeted uh, vulnerable members of our community, which um, could be low income older adults and those with disabilities. You can sign up through HPSM to receive a stack of blank Dear Neighbor uh, postcards. And here's where it gets fun. You take each card and you write a positive, encouraging message starting with Dear Neighbor on each card. And when you're done, you, you receive approximately 25 cards. So when you're done creating all of them, you mail them back to HPSM and they distribute the cards to low income older adults within our county. This is not a program specific to San Bruno. However, it is an opportunity to contribute from home for those that don't want to go out and volunteer physically. Um, internally, our very own senior center staff have a similar program where they outreach to senior center patrons by phone. And it's really just a way um, to keep a level of engagement with those in need while still social distancing and staying home. So about the Dear Neighbor postcard uh, program, you can contact hpsm.org and I've inserted the direct link to this presentation to facilitate that direct connection um, and that will be available on our website and lastly as you know um, this this uh, slide is familiar but social media is a tool that our PIO team has really leveraged to help get information out and get it out quickly and broadly um, if you're not already signed up for our city accounts on Nextdoor, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, then please follow us. It's an easy way to stay connected. We also put information on our local channel one and our website for those that are not on social media. Um, and as we all know, with the active wildfires in our region, SMC Alert and your emergency notification system is another great resource to push information out quickly. Um, this is an option for those that opt for text messages or emails and is often used in the uh, time of an emergency. So if you or someone you know is not already uh, registered for SMC alert, then please encourage them to do so, so that they get our messages. Um, each of the logos on the screen are linked uh, to that respective platform, so you can easily access that if you link to this presentation. And with that, I thank you this evening. Um, that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jennifer, uh, very much for your presentation and all the information and the detail. Are there any uh, questions from uh, my colleagues? Uh, Councilmember Davis, and then Councilmember Mason. Thank you. Um, you did an excellent job. Uh, Ari, you've got some competition, by the way. So thank you so much, uh, so much for that presentation, Jennifer. A couple things. First, I want to thank those uh, volunteering for the testing sites. Uh, it's so important that we're able to offer those in our community. With so many residents out of jobs, I think free testing in the community is really a must. And I, I really appreciate the coordination and the volunteering to make that happen. So thank you. Um, and then my other question, I guess, is the staff. What are I'm not, I guess I don't understand the needs from local businesses in San Bruno. Is there anything we're not able to offer? Take for example a hair salon that can't open a business and hasn't been able to really consistently since March. Are they able to come to the city and get a permit to be able to set up um, some sort of outdoor uh, hair salon stations? Um, in a parking lot or somewhere in the behind the building, et cetera. And is there much need or request for those type of things? Uh, Council member uh, Davis, uh, why don't I take that? And so Jennifer alluded to it a little bit, uh, but we will be um, uh, really soon this week promulgating uh, regulations uh, that will allow certain businesses that are closed to open up out, outside uh, salons in one category as well as personal care services, um, out gyms uh, and uh, play, places of, of, of worship, as well as uh, car, car rooms. And so those regulations, they've taken some time, some time for staff to really uh, go deep and uh, ensure that all the I's and, and T's are dotted and crossed. Uh, but they, they, they've just crossed my desk uh, a little bit before this meeting. And so we hope to get those out this week. Thank you so much. Councilmember Mason. Just, I'm sorry, just a follow up. Has there been a lot of requests from businesses in San Bruno to be able to uh, set up business outside? 
So the primary requests that we have received uh, have been uh, from restaurants and we've been able to facilitate those. Uh, I think there's been sort of an ebb and flow uh, initially before the we were on the monitoring list and businesses were allowed to have some semblance of indoor dining. We really didn't have a lot of quest, requests locally for businesses to set up on the sidewalks in the building. We very quickly promulgated those rules. Uh, once we were added to the uh, state monitoring list, I think we saw what, what a number of other communities saw, which is restaurants that had said, either we're gonna do very limited indoor dining and take out, um, really saw that this could be something that is prolonged and said, you know what, we're, we're gonna take towards setting tables out uh, on the public side away, uh, on the public sidewalk, I'm sorry. What we also allow uh, in um, our conversations with some businesses for, is to take over other areas of public property uh, if there is an adjacent park or city space uh, or parking lot behind their business we're willing to entertain those conversations uh, what we do allow that we have not had uh, restaurants really step forward uh, and, and raise their hand for is to create something like a parklet or a um, more semi-permanent uh, outdoor dining area in the parking strip and so we want to continue to advertise that. Uh, there are a number of cities uh, across the Bay Area uh, where people have done that. It requires a little investment uh, because it does need uh, to, to meet certain requirements for safety because you will be uh, within uh, the, the public street, but we are willing to allow those uh, for a period of time uh, so businesses can advertise that investment and see the benefit of that. Uh, I think what we've really had locally with the restaurants is sidewalk dining, uh, and uh, the restaurants willing to, to take advantage of takeout only. Yeah, it's a, a big challenge, whether it's a restaurant, you're next door to the restaurant and you know, you've got a business too. And so you just close off the streets, et cetera. You're impacted by that as well. So thanks so much. I appreciate that. Councilmember Mason. Thank you. So thanks for the presentation. I just, um, I, first of all, because um, Councilmember Davis mentioned the testing, I wanted to make sure we give a shout out to Councilmember Marty Medina um, for the public who may be watching this. Um, these elected official calls happened initially three times a week. We're now down to one time a week, and they're really an opportunity for the county to give uh, information to all elected officials at the same time. And initially, Councilmember Medina I think on a weekly basis, I could see in the chat room asking about testing centers in San Bruno. Um, he also called our local supervisors and was really on top of it to ensure that we got testing here in our city and that it was free. So just a thank you to Council Member uh, Medina for doing that. Um, I also wanted to just ask a, a couple of quick questions, hopefully. Um, the first is, um, I have had a number of seniors um, ask me about masks in San Bruno Park. And for um, members of the public who may be watching this, uh, I was wondering if you could give an answer on why masks are not required in San Bruno Park. Please. Sure. A um, little clarification. I wouldn't say that masks are not required in San Bruno Park. Uh, there is a statewide mask order that says when you're out in public, you should be wearing a, a mask. However, there's a caveat to that which is if you're exercising, which is what a lot of people do in our park. Uh, and so uh, if you're in one of our parks, you may see people uh, without a mask. Uh, and even walking uh, is a form of exercise and, and someone uh, can, if they state that that's a reason for not wearing a mask, um, uh, they, they are in compliance because they're in compliance with one of the exemptions. And so it truly makes enforcement almost impossible. Uh, and so we, we have had a number of those questions and calls and, uh, in various forms. Uh, and, and it's one of those things that I, I believe when our police chief was given some updates on the enforceability of the massacre, there, there, there's unfortunately so many uh, caveats to it. Uh, and the, the park is the, the, probably the most challenging uh, place to enforce the mass order because it's a park and that's what people recreate and that's an eligible exemption. Great. So they, so it is required, it's mandated that if you're exercising, you're not required to wear it. Is that fair? You are required, if you are in our, in our park and you are not exercising, um, you're, you're required to wear a mask. However, if you are doing one of the many eligible activities uh, where you can be exempt for, from the order, um, that is okay. Okay, that, thank you 
because I've had that asked actually quite quite a bit. And I think for seniors who are in the vulnerable population, it is scary. And I've had a number of seniors tell me that they've just stopped going to San Bruno Park altogether. Um, and so it is unfortunate that it, it's an exception that's allowable. Um, the other question I had was um, around the playgrounds. Is there what what is the schedule looking like for playgrounds um, to open up? Uh, so, unfortunately, I do not have a timetable on that. Uh, that is governed uh, by the state of California and a statewide order. Uh, and so while uh, we know that they have allowed uh, youth recreation uh, with some limitations, as we said in the presentation, no games or no scrimmages, uh, a few things are expressly prohibited, uh, and playground structures are one of those items that are, are not allowed to be opened um, uh, in our county or statewide. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for your presentation. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from council? Okay. Great presentation. Thank you. I can see Marty echoes that too, Jennifer. So we, we all want to thank you. Thank you.